welcome back to Bible study to Psalm 40. Can you believe we got to Psalm 40? Amazing. Good to see you, John and Derek. Looking forward to this and as, as always to learn more from God's Word, to, to see his perspective. I think you're going to read. Okay. Psalm 40. To the chief musician, a Psalm of David. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works, which you have done, and your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than, than can be numbered. Mm. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me, I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips, O, o Lord, you yourself know. I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. Do not withhold your tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me, for innumerable evils have surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me that I'm not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head, therefore my heart fails me. Be pleased, O, G o Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion those who seek my life, let them be driven backward and brought to dishonor who wish me evil. Let them be confounded because of their shame who say to me, aha, aha. Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let such as love your salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinks on me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O my God. Amen. Wow. Let's pray. Lord, we come to this amazing Psalm 40 uh, with great humility and in awe of, of what is contained here, the, the power and the depth and the, the eternal dimension of these words. And we just commit this time to you and pray, Lord, that you will um, speak to us uh, through these words and um, enough, enough for us to digest, Lord, and that it may be a, a blessing for many who, who listen to and watch this program into the future. For your name, amen. 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 Okay, yeah, it's, it's one of those psalms which has more than one dimension, I would say. But it's, it's, you know, the scriptures just, um, I think one day the Lord will, will, of course he will, you know, in glory. He'll lift the veil and say, did you realize you were a great cryptologist, but you couldn't decipher this, could you? Because there's just one wondrous sort of vistas of God's provision and his love. Mm. That's right. And one thinks of the Lord traveling with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus where he yes. opened up. These were the scriptures he opened yes. up. A new t there was no New Testament. Yeah. These are the scriptures he opened up and revealed himself to them. Yeah. And it's just wonderful. Imagine when we sit with him and that day will come and he'll go through saying, here I am, yeah. here I am. And we'll just be in awe and wonder of it all. Because mm. we call it the writings, but it's prophetic, isn't it? It's there prophetic. Is you know. And this psalm is a wonderful example. I mean, I, 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 I sort of, in my imagination, I see it because I see the, the, the record of David's experiences going on there. But, but at the same time, it's undoubtedly a messianic psalm. It's, yeah. it's prophetic, and 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 the <laughs> the prophetic message is so profound. Yeah. It has to it has to uh, you know to trump 
the, the, David's record. But both are important yeah. because both have something to say to us. Uh, but I, I see this, uh, David starting this, and he, he's writing it, you know, I waited patiently, or I understand the Hebrew said, in waiting, I waited. It's mm. this sort of long-term, mm. patiently mm. waiting on the Lord. And, you know, history and scripture records, that in many cases, people waited a long time. We always cite the example of Moses, who, you know, was 40 years and yeah. before he stepped into what he was ultimately born for. Yeah. And, and, and so we have these first three verses, as it were, or they're big, really the first five verses where, where, where David is getting, I know there are two dimensions this, and Derek will open this up for us, but, but David is, as it were, getting into, into his stride and he's building up a head of steam and by verse six, He's fully in the spirit of prophecy. And I find it hugely exciting, but I hand okay. over to Derek. Um, there's just something that comes to mind when I look at this. Um, there was a, probably the most famous English landscape architect before Capability Brown, who did things on a grand scale, was Humphrey Repton. And he gave his clients, he, he was prolific across the country, he gave his clients what were called the little red books. And in those books, he had the full drawings of the, the landscape as it was, and then tracing paper, laying out mm-hmm. what could be done, yeah. what was there in this landscape. And I see this here, it's like, put the tracing paper on, yes. and over to, <laughs> over to Derek. What, what is there in those, those early verses that gives you a conviction that this is messianic? Right. They, I'm, as you know, great. I believe that that this is primarily messianic. Yes. Um, not all commentators agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they, some would say this is basically David, with maybe a messianic flash. Yeah. Y- you, you know, or that the words that applied to David in a, uh, are applied to the Messiah could be applied to the Messiah. I think that's wrong, because of Hebrews chapter ten. In fact, this psalm is commented, if you just measure the amount of space given to it in the New Testament, more space is given to this psalm than any other psalm, you know, Psalm 22 or anything like that, because Hebrews 10 makes this the central piece, Mm. if you like, Mm. in in his argument in Mm. Hebrews 10. And he quotes the verses, in particular verse 6 to 8, we'll look at it properly yeah, sometime, yeah, yeah. but verses 6 to 8 where he talks about, you know, sacrifice and offering mm. you did not desire and mm. so forth. Mm. Um, he quotes that and says this, these were the very words of Christ yeah. when he entered into the world. In other words, as he was stepping over the portal from heaven into yeah. the earth, he was actually saying those very words. Yeah. So it, those three verses, if, the, if Hebrews is inspired by God, yeah. that's the inspired commentary on those three verses, which are messianic. And then your antennae go up and you say, what else is there? Yeah. What well else then, is there in are, this? I, are we saying that, psalm. that the rest of the psalm is not messianic, but sudden, there's no indication that the speaker has changed. So mm. when, when you, the way I want to look at the psalm eventually is just seeing the whole thing as messianic yeah. and seeing that actually it just works as a messianic yeah. psalm. But I'm sure it, it reflects an experience of David as well. Yeah. So uh, we, we have I, I, two I think directions. I, I think that's right. I think in, in a sense using the language of Hebrews that David's life at this point, these things are recording, were a shadow of what is to come, mm. uh, which is the messianic. And I, I don't think there's any conflict between the historical record no. and, 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 and the messianic prophetic yeah. element. I don't, don't think there's you, a You've got the temporal and you've got the eternal. Yes, in, yeah, indeed yeah, it's so. It's all in there. Yeah. Mm. That's the wonderful thing about God's, yes. God's almighty plan. Yeah. <laughs> it's just mind boggling. Mind boggling. So back to my question then, these first verses, Derek. It's in the messianic interpretation where the whole psalm is messianic. Um, These first few verses are actually Christ in the resurrection. Mm. 
mm. um, praising God. He says, I waited patiently for the Lord. That's it on the cross and perhaps even in the three days, three nights. And he inclined to me and heard my cry. And now this is the Lord delivering him from the death and from Hades. Yeah. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit. Well, the, that's the bottomless pit. That's it's Hades, good. you know, yeah, and that's like in, in um, Acts 2, it talks about, you know, you will not leave my soul in Hades, Acts 2, 27, mm. nor let my Holy One see corruption. So God, God delivers him from that pit mm. of Hades mm. out of the miry clay mm. and, cause, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. In other words, yeah. this, is the res this is the resurrection. Yes. Yes, what I love about this is it may not even have been David's experience. He may be using a metaphor and yet that metaphor is an absolute fit yes. you know, to, to the Lord's exactly. experience. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And he has put a new song in my, in my mouth. Yeah. Praise to our God. And I love that contrast. My mouth, praise to our God. So yes. the implication is, yes, Christ is personally praising God, but there's a whole community of believers yeah. who are coming into the blessing of this r deliverance and this resurrection because it's a now... a greater thing to be praising the Lord over, by the way, rather than David just getting out of a, a muddy pit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, why would everyone be praising? Exactly. Yeah. It, Although it, it, in the context of David, it could be yes, is it? all of his, the company of, of Israel yes. praising that he's yes. been saved. It, it, yeah. it works at that level. Yeah. Many will see it, mm. you see, and that, how true is that? Mm. You know, millions upon millions around the world yes. have seen it through the eyes of faith, have seen his death and resurrection, mm. and they will respond by becoming believers and fear and will trust in the Lord. That's the two aspects of faith, the fear of the Lord, which is receiving Jesus as Lord mm. and trusting in the Lord yeah. for our salvation. And so as a result of his death and resurrection, multitudes will be praising God and will be trusting in God yeah. for, uh, for their salvation, which he has accomplished. It's a good fit, isn't it, John? It is a good yeah. fit. I mean, I, I, I have no trouble seeing it with yeah. David as well, but, but I'm very excited by, yeah. by seeing, seeing the resurrection in this. Yeah, I, it, 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 it fits perfectly. Yeah. And, and verse 4 just completes the thought, blessed, or that's really saved, mm. it's all about salvation, you see, has been accomplished. So blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust mm. and does not respect the proud. When, what that... That's saying it in another way, that he, his loyalty is to the Lord. Mm. He, God is his Lord. He does not respect the, the proud. In other words, he does not follow the way who boast in human strength, and human self-idolatry, self-salvation. Yeah. Yeah. He rejects that way now because he is now one who is loyal to God and, mm. and follows the Lord. So again, it's this idea of submission to the Lordship, his Lordship, and trusting him for salvation, yeah. nor such as turn aside to lies, or that mm. could be translated false gods. That's right. So this person has turned his heart, he's repented from following false gods, mm. false philosophies, and now he's making the Lord his trust. Mm. So this is a picture, if you like, of people who are saved as a result of this yeah. divine intervention through, of the Messiah. So, so he's elevated it. The it's words might be true about David, but they're only fully true yeah. about the Messiah. I mean, the point is that many people out in the wider world are aware of David and the Psalms, but they're absolutely unaware of the impact of, and the, the gravity and depth and wonder of the gospel. Yes. Mm. And they need to, we need to help them. Well, we do. Uh, the problem is, of course, that without the Holy Spirit, this is all mumbo jumbo. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's the problem, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, that, that we need to be. Oh, we just need to be evangelizing in 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 ways that well, we just the Holy Spirit. You've got to speak to their heart, and yeah. there's a truth in in pr the proud heart. So you've got to convict people of yes. the sin of, of pride, and it's it's tough. In, in this modern world full, full of baubles and distractions. This, which is why judgment needs to start at the house of God mm. and, and needs revival in the church because how is one ever going to be convicted 
convict the world with the word of God when you're a shambles at home, mm -hmm. weak and pathetic. Yeah. And, and not in any... Where do you hear this? I, I mean, at Oxford Bible Church in Headington, you might yes, hear, you hear these insights, but, w but where would you hear this in, in, in an Anglican church? Well, it wouldn't be a long enough. It might be in the writings it. of some yes, you know, emeritus you know, bishop who, yeah. who can write a long book on the subject that no one reads, but, but it needs to be preached. It does, and there isn't enough time in the liturgical process yeah. to do it. Yeah because they've got to get home and get their lunch on. <laughs> <laughs> back to Derek. Okay, let's get back I to the real world. I love them more dearly, by yeah. the way. I love them to bits, <laughs> but that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> they even keep their coats on now, you know, so they don't have to spend too much time putting the coats on after the service. <laughs> Our heating goes on at one o'clock on a Sunday morning, so it yeah. is, it, it's, you know, just it's starting to tasty. take the edge off it by 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, the next verse is, is beautiful as well. Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works. This word yeah. wonderful means miraculous. You know, mm. Christ mm. Is, is wonderful yeah. counselor. He's, it's a miracle worker. So he's talking about a miraculous work of supernatural deliverance. Mm. But here he's saying, and I would say that this applies to the new birth particularly. Many are your wonderful works of supernatural deliverance. Yeah. In other words, that resurrection miracle that God worked in Christ is now worked in all his people. Yeah. So many of them. And these are the greater works. You know, Jesus said, you'll do my works and greater works will you do also. Well, we're not going to do greater healing miracles than Jesus. Mm -hmm. But the greater works is getting people born again yeah. through the gospel because that wasn't possible before his That was made possible by the resurrection of Christ. And so the recreation of our spirit is one example of these wonderful works mm. that God now does through his death and resurrection. Yeah. And more than that, God has wonderful plans for us for the future. Mm. Your thoughts towards us, mm. so again, it's God's people now, his plans for our future, our eternal future, mm. um, cannot be recounted to you in order. So again, the picture is that through his salvation, there's a whole community that have get saved and come into the blessing. Yeah. And if I can give a little maths lesson now, it's, yeah. this is a, what he's saying here is quite big. Cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they're more than can be numbered. That's a now, lot. That's a big number. One of the first things you learn at infinite. university is about there are different types of infinities. Yeah. All right. The lowest level of infinity is the natural numbers. Mm. Because one, two, three, four, yeah. that goes on forever. And then the squiggle, the ampersand on its side. Yeah, and that is, that is a countable infinity because mm. you can label. And infinities that, that where you can label them with the natural numbers are countable infinities. Yeah. That's the smallest kind of infinity. Yeah. So in other words, if God's thoughts towards us were countable, that would be like all the natural numbers. I mean, that, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. That's without limit. Now, the rational numbers, like three quarters, two thirds, surprisingly, they are, that's, they are countable. Yeah. In other words, you can, you can say, well, this is number one, this is number two, and you'll eventually get all the rational numbers. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge number of thoughts. Yeah. But here it says, God's thoughts towards us are uncountable. Mm -hmm. See, in other words, it's like the real numbers. The real numbers are uncountable. I can't go into yeah. it. But basically, we're talking about not just a low-level infinity. Yeah. We're talking about a high-level, an yeah. uncountable infinity. <laughs> that's how interested God is in us, and that's how many yeah. plans he's got for us for all eternity. It's phenomenal is insight, isn't it? For each one of us. Correct. And exactly. I know the thoughts yeah. I have for you, <coughs> plans to prosper you. Yes and whatever the rest is. Jeremiah 29. That's it. it. Numbering the hairs on our head is quite mind-blowing, but yeah, knowing Compared the thoughts... Compared with this, it's well, easy that's peasy. Peasy. That's <laughs> <peasy>. <laughs> You think yeah. every nanosecond of your life, you know, is, there's a thought. If you think of every grain of sand, yeah. which is about the same as every star, star in the in universe, the universe yeah. that's a finite number. But we're not just talking about that, we're, we're talking about an infinite number. Yeah. Yeah not even a countably infinite number. Mm. <laughs> it's it's mind-blowing, really. It is, really.
That's the end of the maths lesson. Yeah, sorry uh, about phenomenal. that. Phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. It's, yeah. I in like what innumerable, I would Sp say. Spurgeon said, um, God's thoughts are wonderful toward us because they are God's thoughts. When I think, it's a poor little weak empty head that's thinking, but when God thinks, the gigantic mind which framed the universe is thinking upon me. Mm. I, like, I like that. Mm. There are uh, parallels between uh, Psalm 40 and Isaiah 40, I find. And, and within Isaiah, see, as, uh, Isaiah 40 is, you know, the nations are as a drop in the bucket. God is just far, far greater than, you know, anything, the, the greatness of this earth or man. But yet it says he cares. Yeah. He cares for us like he, he I've forgotten the, the scripture where it says that he cares for us like a shepherd. Um, it's here. He tends his flock like a shepherd, verse 11. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have oh, young. young. Yeah. Now, that's the contrast. Mm. So not only is God the almighty, all-powerful mm. creator, you know, immortal, invisible, God only wise, um, he's uh, the omniscient one. He, he's also the one who, as it were, cares for every little detail. Mm. Mm. Amazing. You can't no. grasp it, really. No. <laughs> no. Just have to accept it, but not pretend we can understand it. No, we're just scratching the surface. So, so he starts the psalm by introducing this, you know, the mm. Messiah, having accomplished his work, really, yep. in his resurrection, mm. bringing us who will trust in him mm. into this wonderful eternal mm. salvation. Mm. But that, uh, then, then, then the question is, how did he accomplish that? You know, how, how, how did he do? What did he do to make this even possible? And this is where we go into those k the key verses now, yeah. verse 6 to 8, that are quoted in, in Hebrews. And Hebrews basically says, the, this is what Christ said. Can I just because he I, come into yeah, the world? Can I just back back yeah. because this is so interesting. I just want to backtrack you on something which I think is so amazing. Just to pick up what Derek was saying, and on this and your th this is verse five, and your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. This sort of whatever form of infinity mm. it is, this huge number, and how that par parallels with the very last verse of the Gospel of John, where he says. And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself mm. could not contain the books. Yeah. Exactly. I was thinking of those verses. It's, you know, exactly. it, it, it parallels this in some way. Yeah, absolutely. That, and, and in a supernatural way that we can't really grasp, mm. because I'm sure what John is saying is true. Even mm. the world itself couldn't contain it. Yeah. It's something Vast. And that's just the ministry of the Lord. Just the ministry yeah. of the Lord um, on in earth, those three yes. years. Mm. Yeah. There's so much depth to it. Yeah. yeah. Which includes, of course, his death and resurrection, yeah. which we're talking about now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get my head around it while I know, we're just, while we're just But talking. I can see the merging of the two now. Yeah. I can see how it's not there's there's elements to this resurrection which are yeah. infinite. They're beyond beyond recounting, beyond recall, yeah. and that of course is part of yeah. part of the gospel. So Sorry, uh, David's oh. just, <laughs> he's just teeing us up, isn't he, for Yeah, us. I mean, yeah. I, I would say, you know, all of God's word is holy, but yeah. here, these are one of the verses, you know, and there are other verses that you, we might also point to, but this is like really holy ground, mm. these next three mm. verses, mm. And, and they are very special. And they, they go to the heart of the issue. And, um, and they, but they have their own kind of puzzle to them yeah. because he says, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. Mm. Well, God did actually, you know, ordain the sacrifices and the offerings. So, so, so what, what, what is going on here? By the way, the word sacrifice means blood sacrifice. Mm. The word offering is, is often used for grain offering. So yeah. he's, he's talking about all the sacrifices and offerings that, that God instituted in the Old Testament. Um, and we'll see the interpretation in Hebrews 10, but if you did not desire, my ears you have opened. Right? What, what is that yeah. about? Yeah. Um, um, we'll, come, we'll come back yeah. to that, yeah. yes, or literally it's dug, 
yeah. or pierced yeah. or opened. Then he said, repeats another, in another way, burnt offering and sin offering mm. you did not require. Mm. What, what does that mean? Mm. Then I said, behold, I come. In the scroll of the book it's written of me, yeah. which is very messianic, of course, yeah. because this is the Messiah speaking, because the Bible wasn't really primarily written about me or David or anyone yeah. else. It's written, it's all pointing to the Messiah, isn't it? Yeah. And then he, I, I delight to do your will, O oh God, your law is written in my heart. Mm. So I, perhaps the thing to do now is to go to Hebrews 10 and just yes. see the divine commentary on That's this. That's it, absolutely, um, absolutely. Rather than speculating. Yeah. Um, in, in Hebrews 10, and we'll notice that there's a slight difference of translation, mm. but we, uh, we won't worry about that right now. But um, Hebrews 10, I would start in verse 4. Hebrews 10 is quoting the Septuagint, yes. the Greek translation of the Hebrew, and that accounts for the slight variation. Yep. But it, it doesn't make a big difference. Um, d who wants to? Um, do you want to read it, John? Yeah, where, where from Hebrews 4 to 10, where? Verse, uh, verse 4 to 10, ultimately. Yeah. Right. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you had no pleasure. And then I said, Behold, I've come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. Mm. Previously saying, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Mm. Mind-blowing. And in mind the context blowing. of Hebrews, which I believe is Paul writing Hebrews, um, the, the, the issue going on, the temple is still operating and the Christians are getting very persecuted, the Jewish Christians particularly, and many of them are being pressured, if you like, to return to Judaism. To the, to the sacrifices and Hebrews has got strong warnings, don't, don't yeah. go back, you know, Christ is the fulfillment, yeah. don't go back to the shadow. Yeah. Um, and, and, and he's talking about in this thing that God's, these animal sacrifices can't take away sins. No. They are pointing towards the sacrifice of the Messiah who does take away sins, they, yeah. and, and therefore don't go back to the old. It's really interesting that God has brought in um, the new. You know, with Cain and Abel, you know, Cain's grain offering wasn't acceptable. Abel's sacrifice was acceptable. And yet when we come to, obviously here, it's taking us to another level, you know. Uh, the Lord's sacrifice was acceptable, and yet we, we don't need any blood sacrifices to follow that, but we do remember with a kind of grain offering, which is the bread and the wine. So we don't remember the Lord's mm. sacrifice by sacrificing, um, yeah. uh, but we do have the bread and the wine. So it's quite interesting. And, and the, the Lord gave God, gave quite a lot of attention to Cain, but not to Abel. I mean, so in other words, there's, well, there's, there's a transition. Well, there is, and, and uh, but this would have been, Cain and Abel being the first two children of Adam and Eve would have been brought up with a knowledge and Abel executed that knowledge and that was because of the fall, you cannot approach God apart from blood. Mm. It's impossible. Mm. Uh, it's not necessary there was anything wrong with Cain's offering, mm. but he approached God without blood and that was the problem. Mm. Mm. And, 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 and so we can say that from that, Derek and I were talking about this earlier, from that first sacrifice where God sacrificed a ram or a lamb mm. in order to cover uh, Adam and Eve, with it, that was the first sacrifice. Mm. And if we go from there right up to the crucifixion mm. and just consider for a moment the millions, the millions upon millions of animals were, that were sacrificed, mm. Mm. And let's just expand that and, and realize that, that 
of those millions and millions of animals, there were probably billions of gallons or litres of blood spilled. Mm. The numbers are enormous. Mm. And none of that was sufficient. That's it. Right. The blood in one man, the Son of God, was more than sufficient. Mm. And it, it, you know, whatever, I don't know what, let's say eight gallons of oh. blood in the human body. I don't know what it is, but some, perhaps something yeah. like that. Yeah. That was enough. It's yeah. a powerful thought. It's a powerful thought. Praise God. This, is, this is why we remove the blood of Christ from our theology and our worship at our peril. Yeah, that's right. Mm. We yeah, really exactly do. has been yeah. removed. So let, let yeah, amen to you. that. The, let's see what the Hebrews actually yeah, says then. Good. Um, he's saying the blood of bulls and goats could not take away sins, verse 4. So, so in other words, that is why, that, well, let's, therefore when he came into the world, this is at the incarnation. Mm. This is Jesus dedicating himself to God mm. at the incarnation. And when you dedicate yourself to God, there's a principle that we'll see in a minute, but when you dedicate yourself to God, God then give, empowers you to do his will. You dedicate first, then God consecrates you, empowers you to, to do his will. And he opens your ear so that you can hear mm -hmm. him. And in this case, he gave Jesus a body through which he could accomplish God's will. And it says, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. Mm. What that says is the old covenant sacrifices, which were ordained by God, they did not satisfy God. They did not they fulfill. They All couldn't. the billions of gallons. Couldn't. They just pointed to the answer, yeah. but they were not the answer themselves. Mm. Uh, but here is the answer. But a body you have prepared for me. Mm. A body is prepared to fulfill all the sacrifices, which includes the burnt offering. And the burnt offering actually includes his perfect life for three, 33 and a half years. Mm. That, that is the burnt offering, a life lived unto God, mm. but was ultimately offered up as a, as a sacrifice on the cross. Um, he needed the body to do that, yeah. you see. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. In other words, the animal sacrifices mm. didn't do it. But here is the answer. Then I said, and the answer has to come from a willing heart. Someone who will fulfill the law perfectly mm. will be the burnt offering and the sacrifice for sin. I have come. I am the final offering. Mm. In the volume of the book, it's written to me. In Isaiah 53 and all the sacrifices, it's prophesied that it's the Messiah that will come mm. who will offer himself for our salvation. He has come to do your will, O God, which is to be the burnt offering, to mm. be the, the sin offering. Previously saying, he's interpreting Psalm 40 now, previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offering for sin you did not desire nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, behold, I've come to do your will, O Lord. He takes away the first, what's that? The first covenant. Yeah. He's, he's, he's the first covenant now, he's wrapping up. Yeah that he may establish the second. The first covenant in the blood of animals now, he is taking it away. Mm. It's going to be no longer operative. In order to establish the second, that is the new covenant that is established in his blood. Mm. By that will, we have been sanctified, praise God, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. So it's very clear that it's a messianic uh, no question. Fulfillment. And, and there's something about the, the Son of God in eternity saying, a body you have prepared for me. It's, it's um, Philippians 2. Didn't count equality with God, something to be grasped. But he condescended to take on human form, to take on this body that's been prepared yeah. for him. And that body was to be the sacrifice, that yeah. he came into human form. It's a big move. <laughs> That's a big move. Yeah. And the life is, is in the blood, but when the blood is shed, the life is, yes. is taken. Blood is, yes. is a very, I very significant the part. Upon the, altar for the, the life is in the blood, and I have given it yeah. blood to you upon the altar for the atonement of your sin. And this is the outworking, yeah. the life of Christ. And all life is miraculous. Yes. From Yes. Birth from conception is yes. miraculous, and yes. then the blood starts pumping, and then to the final breath, 
as it were. It's then it it's ended. Um, it's it's some. I think it is sacred. Life life is sacred. The blood is is sacred, and, and uh, because it's the Lord's blood was shed for us. Mm. So it's, uh, we say it so flippantly at communion, yeah. but it's it's very very serious. And and to superimpose upon it the the, the mores of. And, and social views of today and say it's just medieval and disgusting and revolting. Mm. It, it shows absolutely no understanding at all of what's gone on. No humility before God, no humility. our creator. Yeah. Mm. Is it a good time to talk about yeah. my ears you have opened? Yes. Yeah. Because this is where we have the difference. In, in the original Hebrew, it is my ears you have opened mm. or pierced or, mm. or dug. But when it's translated by the Septuagint scholars, they say, a body, you are prepared for me. So they're both inspired translations and they both agree with each other. But th my ears you have opened actually refers to a Hebrew custom that actually does shed quite a lot of light to this. And, and it's in Exodus 21, yeah. verse 5 and 6. It's also in Deuteronomy 15, verse 16 and 17, almost identically. But... In those days, if you uh, got into debt, you'd have to sell yourself as a servant or a, mm. or a slave, really. Mm. But not forever, you know, for a period of time until you'd essentially paid off your debt. And it says in, Deuteron in Exodus 21.5, if a servant plainly says, I love my master, my wife, my children, I will not go out free. Then his master will bring him to the judges for their confirmation and he will also bring him to the door or to the doorpost and his master shall pierce his ear there it is with an owl yeah. now an owl is not the noise very he makes painful. <laughs> no, it's yeah. not the noise he no. makes owl <laughs> it's, it's a pointed we, instrument we used to call it a bradawl yes <laughs> yes and you just bang this, That's this it. um, it's a point, spike it's a pointed spike yeah yeah and it says and he will serve him forever so this is the picture of the bond servant or the love slave, mm. that he um, he doesn't he he is dedicating himself. He loves his master, and and this should be a picture of us. We love our Lord, yeah, and so we dedicate ourselves to him, uh, to to serve him mm. forever. We don't want to leave his house, mm. you know, um, even though our debts have been paid. Yeah. We don't want to leave his house. And if we make that dedication, then he is pierced at the door. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why it's at the door is the door is like the doorway into a new life, mm. okay, a life of service. And he is pierced. He's almost, he dedicates himself and then the ear is pierced. And the opening of the ear signifies that his ear is now open to his master's command, mm. you see. Mm. And so that now he is empowered, if you like, to, to serve his, his master. Mm -hmm. And um, this, what Jesus, I believe, happened as he was about to step into, into this life. At the door of eternity, Jesus dedicated himself Mm. And, th and that's what Philippians 2 talks about. Yeah. He laid aside his glory and mm. made himself with the attitude of a servant. He dedicated himself. And God then, by the Holy Spirit, opened his ear and gave him a body. He empowered him to be able to hear him and to serve him. Mm. And so then he came into the world, into this body, and God opened his ear to serve him. And the key thing from that passage in Exodus is it was voluntary. Yes. It's totally you could end it. it. You could end that. Yes, it, um, it, it's voluntary and you became this sort of bond servant. Yeah. But the interesting thing is it was only one ear. Yes. But here it's plural. Yeah. So it's yeah. Full, both ears. It's the even greater, yes. fuller commitment. That's right. And yeah. there's also scriptures, and I can't remember what it is where you, I opened it, the, I heard with the, with the yeah, ears Isaiah 50. Hermit. Isaiah 50, that, that's very, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Because the, another messianic passage in Isaiah yeah. 50, Jesus says, it's one of the servant songs really, Isaiah 50 verse 4 to 6, 
The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. Um, he awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. The, then verse 5, the Lord God has opened my ear. Yeah. And this is the Messiah speaking. Yeah. And I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. I gave my, in other words, he was obedient unto death. Mm. I t gave my back to those who struck me in my cheeks, to those who plucked out the beard. That's what, how we know Jesus wore yeah. a beard. Yeah. Um, I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. So he was opened, God, he heard God every morning. Yeah. He obeyed God every day, even unto death. Yeah. And he is the, the burnt offering. Mm. I delight to do your will, O God. Yeah. He came as the servant, you see. Uh, to fulfill God's, what was necessary in becoming a sacrifice for It is us. amazing, Praise that, God. you know, Isaiah, which we, we think of the, mess, the great messianic passage in the suffering servant is, is here in Psalm 40. Yes. And really amazing, amazing. Yes, and, and then, you know, that the willingness is there in verse seven. Here, here I am, I have come. To do your will about me in the scroll. There's an interesting uh, connection with this, and John chapter ten, mm. um, uh, where Jesus talks about um, something similar. And because uh, I think there's a principle here: when you dedicate yourself to God, at the door, right? God then, the Master, opens your ear and it, he empowers you to serve him. And in the same way, when we dedicate ourselves to do God's will, uh, God anoints us in, in our own particular gifts, whatever they might be. He activates those gifts mm -hmm. and he anoints us and b opens the door for us to fulfill our ministry, whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. First the dedication, then the consecration. Mm -hmm. And we see this, actually, could you read? I've, I've lost my... Uh, well, I, if John, John reads it, he's got the better version. Reading? John 10, the first... Oh. Oops. Oops. That's right. <laughs> yeah. The first... Th I might stop you, but the first two or three verses of John okay. 10. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Now, this door, what is this door? I would suggest that he's talking about other ones who are false messiahs, false yeah. saviors. Yeah. But he's saying that the, the true messiah has to enter a certain door. Yeah. And that, among other things, that door is defined by the messianic prophecies, in particular the virgin birth. Yeah. He has to be conceived of a virgin. Mm. There are other things too, but that's the primary thing. And, and so the door that he had to enter into the earth from eternity is the virgin birth. And he is saying he's the one yeah. who fulfilled that. Yeah. And all others are false messiahs, they're yes. thieves and robbers. Yes. They, yes. Don't, he says, they don't have the right pedigree. <laughs> yeah. I am the door, doesn't he? Right, so... Um, yeah, just a bit more. Yes, yeah. uh, but he who enters by the, do by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Mm. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And I just want to talk about the doorkeeper, mm. right? Who is this doorkeeper? I believe it's the Holy Spirit. Yes, I think so. Yeah. The, and it's true for our, I want to apply it to our own life, but in there. Mine says the watchman, but it fits. The doorkeeper's better, yeah. I think. Yeah. As he is going to enter into the world, yeah. he dedicates himself to God, as we've seen. Mm. And then the Holy Spirit is the doorkeeper who opens the door mm. And Jesus was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So, like I say, the Spirit empowered, brought, was the one who opened the door for him to come yes. into the world. He was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit, as God told Mary. And in the same way, we stand at the door, let's say, of our future, of our future ministry. Mm. We have to dedicate ourselves to God. And then the Holy Spirit, the doorkeeper, will anoint us and open the door for us mm. to do whatever God has for us to do. Yeah. But we That's have to dedicate picture. ourselves and we have to say to God, Lord, I, I'm your love servant. Yeah. I delight to do your will, O Lord. Mm. Your law is within my heart. And then God will open your ear to hear him. Yeah. 
and he will empower you to obey him yeah. and you will fulfill, you will walk through that door yeah. into God's best for your life. Very good. Very good. Absolutely. Okay, so I think we've covered verse 6 at least. If you um, can remember which psalm we're in. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we, we could, um, so that is, that is really ex- gone back. So in the Messianic interpretation, it's, it's now gone back mm. to the beginning, right? It starts at the end, yes. you know, now it f- it's like a flashback now. This is, this is the this beginning is what we now. got here. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah. This is what I came to do. That's right. And then, um, what's the next verse? I've lost well, my way. V- verse, it depends how far you think you've verse got. Verse 9. Um, Verse 9 would be a good place to pick it up, yeah. I, I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. So now... I do not I, seal my lips. Yeah. So now he's talking about his ministry. Yeah. In, in the messianic interpretation, this is what, you know, for three and a half years, mm. he, he was a preacher, he was a teacher, he yeah. proclaimed, and he's really saying, I didn't hold back. Yeah in declaring God's word. And in a sense, that's what got him into trouble. You know, he, did, he didn't kind of mince his message to make it acceptable to no. people. He, he now you're talking about, still talking about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, because um, it also, you know, David was of that type as well. You know, he would proclaim righteousness. He did. In the Always. greatest. All the way through oh, the yeah. Psalms, we've seen yeah. him doing that. Yeah. So David is the type of Christ. Yeah, yes. exactly. But, exactly. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. But, um, Sorry, I've lost my notes here. But yes, yeah. I w- I've noticed th- the emphasis here. I've proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the mm. great assembly. Mm. You know, he preached to thousands and multitudes, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. I didn't restrain my lips, O Lord. You yourself know. In other mm. words, he could he could have made his message more acceptable, exactly, more motivational. But he he was quite confrontational of, of, often. Yeah. I I haven't hidden your righteousness mm. in my heart, like the Sermon on the Mount. There's no kind of compromise to the sexual standards of the society to become popular. Uh, I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. Mm. Mm. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the greater sin. In other words, he has basically taught them about God, who God is, what God is like. And by the way, I think it is a lesson for us. And when I read Great Assembly, I think the public square, or I think you know, going out on the airwaves on Revelation TV yeah. and just saying it. You know, we're not hiding God's righteousness on this channel. No. You know, we shouldn't hi- hide it when we, are, we see things that are wrong out in the public square or in society. We've got to speak God's righteousness. It's mm. a duty. It's made difficult though, isn't it, in many cases? Very. You say you have to choose your words. Yeah. Well, you get arrested mm-hmm. for just praying. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. Saying nothing. So you might as well speak out. And also, there's nowhere to hide. People know who we are, so we may as well just go for it. (laughs) (laughs) You know, know, march to the sound of the gunfire, John, I think. Yes, you have to. But I'm saying it's it's different (coughs) broadcasting station, radio, television, whatever it is, and and increasingly so if you're using the internet to broadcast. It it is. I I was warned. I was warned by a barrister a few years ago, senior QC, saying that before KC came in, um, that, um, you know, the gospel will become, the way things are going, the gospel will become mm-hmm. hate speech. Yes. Will be, will be interpreted as hate speech. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. So there is no, we're not it, ashamed of the gospel, it, we've got to say it, and whatever inevitable. the consequences. It's inevitable. It, ha- it has to be listed as hate speech because it challenges everybody's truth. Yeah. Your truth and my truth and mm-hmm. somebody yeah. else's truth yeah. and, 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 and the purpose of life is to serve that truth yeah. and to cause it to come fulfilled. Well, the gospel challenges that head on yeah. and therefore it has to be a hate speech, doesn't yeah. it? It's inclusive, you. but you must repent. <laughs> it's, not, it's exclusive in that you, you, it's only inclusive if you repent. Yes. <laughs> so it's open for all, but you have to repent and yes. that's, that's not acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you shouldn't be safe. Yeah. If you come to a Bible-believing church, it, yeah, because it will bring you under conviction. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it shouldn't be a safe place. But it's a pro- the point is God is it, not safe. It is a problem <laughs> for broadcasters because yeah. if you're closed down, then you're you're you're, you're muted. You're silenced, yeah, right, and there's yeah. no merit in that. 
That's yeah. right. So one has to weave, you need wisdom. weave the way in wisdom. Yes, you need. You need so much wisdom, and yet it, you know, when it comes to the final, you know, like in Acts four, should we obey God or yes. man? Oh, oh, you're not allowed to preach on the streets anymore, yes. Peter and John. Yeah, yeah. Well, on your bike. <laughs> no contest, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Okay, keep going. Yeah, so those verses really talk about Christ's perfect obedience, mm. which is necessary for him to, to be a burnt offering. Yeah, would the Lord have been shut down by, you know, regulators? Some of the things he said? I think oh, he would. Oh, yes. Yeah, it was well, they were no was different. I mean, the, 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 the religious leaders were no yeah. different. Yeah. Mm. They would uh, try to shut him down, didn't they? That's what got him into trouble, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But they, uh, and as I was once on the BBC, oh, that's just your version of Christian. I mean, it's just quoting from yeah. the Bible. Yeah. Oh, that's your version. Yeah, that's right. Mm. That's how they belittle it. So they've rewritten what, what's, yeah. what the scriptures are saying. There's no, why, why did the Lord go through all that we've just described, that suffering that really, you know, grieves, it's grieving to read. Um, if, if sin isn't that well, important, it, it, if it, sin it, is just a by the by, all you have to there's get, no need for the cross. It's not. All you have to get your vibrations right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, so I read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Doesn't really get anyone anywhere, does it? No, it doesn't. But apparently we are transforming th through a, from the third dimension to the fifth, I think. Yes. I think, I, I think that's okay. the, the, latest, that, that's the latest reading on this stuff. We need Derek to unravel that for painful. us because we need Derek to <laughs> decode that mathematically. <laughs> no, that doesn't compute. <laughs> okay, keep going, Derek. We're well, I'm just the, saying oh, that this, this emphasizes the teaching of Jesus. Mm. Yeah. You know, the verses 9 and 10. His, yeah. he, he has, his, his, his teaching is perfect. Mm. And I, I think we need to put a big emphasis on the teaching of Jesus in the Gospels. Mm. as the foundational New Testament teaching. Mm. Yes. Because in, when he rose from the dead in Matthew 28, he said, you know, go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all yeah. that I have commanded you. Yeah. So the whole teaching of Jesus that is set forth here, that pronouncing the will of God, is foundational teaching for the new covenant. Of course, the apostles built on that foundation. But, we, but we, we mustn't think that somehow, because he gave it before the cross, it's not teaching for us. It, it is. Exactly. Um, it tells us who, what Indeed. God is like and what God's standards are. Mm. And God's salvation, mm. you know. The, the, thi God. the thing is that before the cross, a lot of it was impossible. So you get the Sermon on the Mount, and as Martin Lloyd-Jones said, you can't get to the end of that without not feeling thoroughly wretched. Right. Um, and and so, so it was delivered under the law, but it serves its purpose because it's impossible. It. But in Christ, it's all possible. Exactly. Through the Spirit. It's all carried through, yeah. through the Spirit, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. Yeah, Math Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, which stretches over, I don't know how many chapters, um, is, is like those early chapters of Romans. You're yes. not going to get righteousness through. You're not. Mm. Uh, through the law or through, through right. your goodness, That's right. your righteousness, because it isn't there. Mm. Mm. And then verse 11 links to that in a sense, because yeah. this is, uh, in the Messianic understanding, mm. this is actually now Jesus praying to God on the cross. Right? Yeah. His ministry leads to the cross, yeah. where he actually becomes ultimately that burnt offering, you know, the first three hours on the cross, Jesus was the burnt offering, offering up his righteousness for us. Mm. The second three hours, he became the sin offering when the sun was turned to darkness. Our sin, that, that's a picture of Christ being blotted out with our sins. Mm. He was the sin offering, taking our sins and the punishments for our sins mm. on the cross. Mm. He was fulfilling all of that. And this, I believe, is his prayer on the cross. And he's saying, Look, God, I didn't withhold I didn't hold back. I, I declared who you are fully. Yeah. Now, pl don't hold back from me. That's right. Do not withhold your tender mercies from me. Mm. Lord, I've declared about your tender mercies, your steadfast love, how faithful you are, you know, and all of this. Now, prove it in my life now. Don't withhold your grace and your mercy the from most me. extreme point. And he's yeah. praying, really, for God. And that's how the psalm actually 
starts, of course. Yeah, I know. Rejoicing that God exactly. heard this Has prayer. heard it. But this is the prayer that yeah. God heard. And yet you just have that one point in time, my God, my God, yeah. why hast thou forsaken me? Yes. Which is, you know, unfathomable. Yeah. But there was that point where it broke. Yes. But yet God's love and his truth protected the Lord. Yeah. And he's even through that, you know, being in that slimy pit, the miry clay. Yes. And he's, he's, yeah. he is praying. And of course, the, he answered. Mm -hmm. We see the answer prayer at the start of the psalm. But note, he does do not withhold your tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me for innumerable evils have surrounded me. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, that was true at the cross. Yeah. Mm. All the demonic principalities yes. and powers, yeah. as well as evil men, yeah. were surrounding him. Wow. Then there's here. Can't do too many more then, because oh. we're in the last minute. Ah. Well, maybe we'll leave this yeah. as a puzzle for next time. Okay. Good. He says, "My iniquities have overtaken me." Yeah. Now, how is that a problem uh, yeah, for the messianic? Oh, that exactly. I think I, I, I drew that that to <laughs> verse to Derek's attention right before we started. Said, "Oh, we need to explain that one," but it's not going to be today because <laughs> we've we've gone through quite yeah. quite a dramatic journey. Yeah. Boy, it happened just in a, an instant of time. What we've been discussing about the blood and the sacrifice. It, Something dramatic happened there at the cross mm. on our behalf when the Lord Jesus died for us in, in that body prepared for him. Yeah. So we're just here in awe, lost in wonder, love and praise. Thank you so much, John and Derek. God bless you.